Uh, my name is James and, and I am a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. I struggle with my disease for the better part of two decades. From a little borough right outside of Center City, Philadelphia. I didn't grow up in the best area. I've seen a lot from a very early age. You know, I come from a dysfunctional family also. You know, struggling in and out of treatment centers, in and out of institutions, in and out of prison, also in and out of my family's life, in and out of my daughter's life. I finally reached the bottom. You know, I went to a treatment center and, you know, they suggested I move into sober living and I took the suggestion. How many people is it your first time, first rodeo? Really? First time? First go around? That's awesome. The reason why I asked if I was in a room full of alcoholics and drug addicts, because A, I needed to know if I'm in the right place or not. B, somebody needs to hear the message of hope. You know, because I know every time I went into treatment, which was nine times, they would always say, look to the left and look to the right, and only one of these is going to stay clean and sober. You know, where I'm at my recovery today is I was invited to be a key speaker at an event in my hometown, April 29th. Right around the first week of April, I just came up with an idea that I was going to ride my bicycle to this event as opposed to having them fly me to the event. And that's exactly what I did. I came up with the idea. I went and got a bicycle. I packed up my saddlebag with tuna pouches and protein bars, and I got on my bicycle, and I started riding from West Palm Beach, Florida to Philadelphia. And when I got to that event, I spoke in front of a crowd. The head count was just right around 10,000 people. And my life was changed that day. My 18-year-old daughter, who I caused a lot of wreckage in her life, she was sitting right in front of that stage as I was speaking in front of that crowd, proud of me, you know, proud of her dad. I decided to donate my bicycle after I spoke. I said, someone in this crowd is new in recovery. Someone in this crowd is new to their sober living home. And someone in this crowd needs this bicycle more than I do. The gentleman that got that bicycle was brand new in recovery. And um, he had never been given anything in his life. And, and that bicycle was the first thing that anybody ever gave him. You know, that was a spiritual experience for me. This mission has really put me to the test physically, mentally. That combination right there has helped me to work on my spirituality, so it plays a major role in my recovery. Along with raising awareness, there's not just an opioid epidemic, but there's an addiction epidemic going on right now and people are dying. But there's also a solution and there's also success stories. And I just try and live in that solution and I try and be a part of some of those success stories that, you know, if a once hopeless dope fiend you know, someone that was once broken and homeless and beaten down and their family wanted nothing to do with them and their kids weren't in his life and get those things back that I just mentioned and more, anybody can do that. You know, where I'm at in my recovery today also is like, I, I could never do this alone. I couldn't do my recovery alone and I couldn't do this bicycle alone. I have a lot of amazing people, um, the generosity, and, and the mankind that I found out there while I was on the bicycle and still even today being at the McShin Foundation, everyone's been so helpful and uh, world friendly and, and I need that to keep going on this mission. So I'm blessed today, you know, and, and, and I'm grateful today. And sometimes I don't know what that means, but um, sometimes my gratitude doesn't need any kind of words. It's just the actions I put behind the word.